Hi, I'm Mary and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio and this video is the first video of what I hope will be many on the wonders of dyeing with indigo. This video is basically a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's primarily for people who have never uh, made an indigo vat and so I'm just going to run through some of the things you may want to have in your inventory and we'll look at some of the things you may want to dip when the time comes, okay? So first of all, let me just say that I was exiled from my usual workstation because we are working on the back deck. So now I'm on the front deck, which is a much smaller quarters, but you can see that you can make it work, okay? So the first thing you're going to need as equipment, which you may not already have, is a pot that probably looks a little different than what you were using when you were dying with the other botanicals, uh, like Osage or Cochineal or Matter or what have you. What you want with indigo is a pot that is taller than it is wider. And that's because you don't want the fiber to get down to the bottom where the sediment is. And also you want a smaller opening on smaller mouth so there's less exposure to oxygen and that'll um, that'll become more clear as we go on but if you don't already have a pot this is a good time to get one of these because it is the canning season it is uh, late summer uh, and they will be available for you in grocery stores and hardware stores and the like I have smaller ones because we are not going to be dying huge amounts at any one time. That's for you to do later when you want. I mean, I've seen vats that are uh, in plastic garbage cans, for heaven's sakes. They can be huge, but we'll think small. So get yourself a, uh, if you don't already have one, get yourself a pot that is taller than it is lighter, okay? That's one thing you may not have. Another thing is you have to look at your heat source. Now if you see, I've got my old beloved burners here, but I'm using them as tabletops. I just put tiles on top of the burners. I will not be using these because they give too much heat. I want less heat for an indigo vat. So I will use either something like this, where I can regulate my heat better, have lower heat, or I'll use something completely different. But what I want to say is you don't really want temperatures uh, any more than about 110, 120 at the most. So we really are talking about low uh, temperatures for our indigo vat. Now what I like to do is this. I like to get one of the big fat pots, canning pots, that I use just for regular dyeing. And I put an old funky one of these in. And then I, I uh, Let's pretend this is my indigo vat. I pour boiling water around this to keep this vat warm. Never gets too hot and when it cools down I can just lift this up, pour the water out, out and add hot boiling water. So think about this kind of a setup for your um, workstation. And let's see, what else might you not yet have? Uh, I'm guessing you have stirrers. Let me put this back here. I'm guessing you do have long stirrers. This is my old beloved. <laughs> I don't know why I ever used a wooden spoon, but you can see I've used it many years. You probably want something that's more like a stainless steel or aluminum. But uh, really and truly, this cuts shorter, of course. This works wonders, just a plain old wooden dowel as your stirrer, and your stirrer is not like this, it's very slowly, very slow circle. So in addition to a stirrer, you'll want gloves. Now if you've been using this kind forever, these are still good, you can still use them for many things related to uh, indigo, but what you really want are these workhorses. You want to get the really thick rubber gloves lined uh, you, you want them for when you are actually getting your hands into the vat. You know, you're moving fiber around or you're lifting fiber up. That pot of, of, uh, of uh, 
water will be hot, very hot. So you want to insulate your hands from the heat. And of course, you also want the glove to be a little higher so that you won't um, dye your forearm. There are on the market some red gloves, which you might be eyeing. They are the red ones that come all the way up here and they have the fluted, kind of the pleated arms. And they look really cool and you look like a really cool dyer. Don't buy them, don't waste your money. Uh, they are, they do not protect you from the heat and you sweat ferociously inside. They're very uncomfortable gloves, even though they look kind of cool. Okay, so, oh, one more thing. Um, pH papers. Now, this particular box is from Indigo Instruments, indigo.com. They have all sorts of uh, options, pH strip options. This one in particular is for uh, Indigo because it only tests from pH 7, which is neutral, it would be like a regular water, okay, up to pH 14. Very, very alkaline. We would never go as high as 14, depending upon what we uh, dye, it will be between 10 and 11. But this is specifically for high alkaline solutions, which is indigo. So get yourself some pH strips. It doesn't have to be fancy like this, it can just be any little thing. Or anything that can kind of indicate to you what your pH is. So this is kind of what you'll need. There is, of course, everything else. Um, you know, but that, that all the other equipment is what you already have from your earlier dye classes. And let me just show you this. This is just a pot, a specimen pot, of the Japanese indigo, which you can grow at home. And I know many of you have, and many of you have made beautiful blues out of this. Now, I have no sun at my property, so here it is August. These things should be in full bloom, and of course they should. there should be dozens of them in rows. This won't give me any blue in particular, but I love looking at the plant and it gives you an idea of what the indigo plant looks like. And I'm actually incorrect in what I said because I'm indicating that there might just be one type of indigo. That's not true. There are dozens upon dozens. Some are simply better blues though. And that would be, I guess your best is indigo ferra tinctoria. Now, thing to remember, about this, and this is where we're going to get to the really fun part, is that indigo is a warm climate plant and it grows most easily around the equator. You have indigo everywhere on every, every uh, hemisphere, every continent I should say on the hemispheres. Um, if you think about a warm climate plant, well what do you wear in warm climates? You do not wear wool, you do not wear alpaca, you wear silk, you wear cotton, you wear linen, uh, you wear hemp, you wear those wonderful breathing type of fibers. So now in indigo it means that you can dye with cellulose or plant fibers, not just animal or protein fibers. Um, this is excellent news. So let me show you some of the things that you can consider dyeing in your dye vat, in your uh, indigo vat I should say. Okay. The first thing is what I talked about, and that is cotton. This is cotton lawn. You really do want to get yourself some cotton fabric if you're interested in some uh, shibori techniques, which we'll play with a little bit towards the end of this group. This is cotton lawn. This is, <laughs> I should have pressed it beforehand. This is a cotton pennant. With a, uh, uh, with a star at the very end of it. This is from Dharma Trading. And this will hang on a pole. And it'll look much better then than it will than it does now. But again, it's 100% cotton. Silk, here's a silk chiffon, scarf blank. Here is silk. This is the mulberry or the bombic silk. I'll be dyeing the silk in an indigo vat. Okay, so get yourself some of the um, cotton and the silk because really and truly they, get, they pick up the indigo the best and you can also get the darkest indigo blues uh -oh, with these fibers. But we also have our old faithfuls, the ones we've been working with, all of these groups. Here is 
ta-da, you recognize this, the Clickitat BFL yarn. And then we have loose fiber. This is Faith, the Merino fleece. Uh, we have the wool flannel. We have a gray mohair. We have this, remember this? I'm not even sure if I ever actually used it in our groups, but it is um, a blend of regular blue face Lester and then the what they call the black or the brown blue face Lester. That'll be beautiful when put into an indigo bat. But these are all going to give us blue, right? That's not all that indigo does, and this is what we are leading up to. Remember all of the gorgeous yarns that you have dyed in the last two groups. You can now pull some of those um, little individual hanks aside and they will be dedicated to your indigo bat. These will give us a rich dark purple because red and blue gives purple. Pink and blue will give us a lavender, a soft purple. I didn't pick out my best yellows for this video. These are kind of pale and bland, but this should give us a nice squared away green. This will be very interesting. I think a light, uh, kind of a weak indigo vat will work with this to give a, a kind of a pale, maybe even a minty green. And these guys here, when you think of adding blue to orange, you think of brown. That's very true. We may get some luscious browns out of these. We also can get grays, believe it or not. So there's lots of adventure in dyeing, going back, picking out the yarns that you've already dyed and dipping them in a vat. But there's also this option. Let me see if I can even find it. Here's a top that I painted with extracts, and we've never really talked about extracts, but I painted it. Notice it's kind of conservative. It actually spins up into a beautiful uh, yarn, but I'm going to dip it and we will see what happens. I'm predicting blues, purples, maybe browns, maybe a green, I'm not sure. We'll see. And then the last thing I want to show you, and I just showed you, well hello, there's a little dog. I just showed you this with the cochineal, in the cochineal group. I wasn't 100% thrilled with the way the modifiers picked up or affected the bright red of this silk and wool blend. So I'm going to take this, take a big chunk of it, dip it in indigo, okay, and come up with, I'm hoping, another color. So we're going to have a lot of fun in this group. So what you have to do right now is kind of get an idea of what you need in terms of equipment and what you want to be dipping. But let me tell you this. Look at how much I have here. There is so much fiber. You're going to only be making a small vat to start with. So think small in your first vat. And I would also think just plain blue. Wait on these guys. Maybe, maybe not. And then if in fact you know you want to go further with this, uh, you can perhaps get some more indigo. I will give you my sources. Um, is very easily available all the ingredients for our first uh, indigo bat. So that actually will be our next um, uh, video that will be making the first stock for our first bat. And this is going to be great fun. Okay, I'll see you very soon. Bye.